Hello, this is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. So welcome to this fourth episode of Chess Noob Game Review, and today we're going to be looking at an Italian game. So when I was sort of earlier in my chess journey, I played a lot of Italians as white, and of course we all face a lot of Ital face against a lot of Italians as black. And once you sort of move out of the beginner realm, so you know I'm sort of in the 1300s now, you end up with games which often look a little bit like this, where the opening on both sides is pretty much close to perfect, uh, and then the battle is really in the middle game, as was the case in this game as well. So let's begin. So the Italian game of course begins with e4. e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop to c4. Now against the Italian I've recently been playing the two knights defense, so aiming to sort of encourage a uh, a uh, knight attack or sort of the fried liver attack of which then I can play some tricky moves like the Ponziani Steinitz Gambit. However my opponent plays in a very principled way with d3 and against d3 what I usually play is h6 and I think this is all still book, yep this is all still theory. Um, the idea here is that I sort of disallow the g5 square from the duck square bishop and the knight. Uh, here the opponent short castles, I develop my other bishop, uh, they sort of push a pawn forward, uh, and here I play uh, my d pawn myself, d6, and uh, commonly I would sort of ex expect a potential sort of pawns moving here. Uh, yep, there we are, so bring the bishop back, uh, the other uh, pawn goes forward, you know, aiming potentially to trap that bishop. Uh, and so immediate a5, where are we now? Yep, so it's still best, so still pretty much equal. And up to this point, um, where are we now? So move eight, every move has either been book, has been best, or excellent. So push forward, knight coming back, uh, and on a move 10 was when my opponent made the first uh, mistake. Uh, there we go, so minus uh, 1.32, so significant advantage to me. Uh, that knight, developing the other knight, would have been best. Now I knew in the game that this was a mistake. I didn't know how to punish it though, uh, so what I opted to do was just to short castle. That didn't really seem like much of a problem, and you know, pushing more pawns here is potentially damaging the weakness of the defense of the king. So I knew this was bad, but at the same time wasn't really sure what to do about it. Now the opponent now plays another mistake. So knight to, uh, sorry not knight, the rook to e1, uh, and you can see so almost minus two now, uh, and this one's a little bit easier to explain and a little bit easier to know how to exploit. And the, basically the idea is, is the king is the only defender of the f2 pawn. So the f pawn is often weak, uh, and so knight jumping forward there will be a double attack on that pawn, and then that's forcing because they have to do something, because otherwise a bishop can take that pawn, uh, which will be with check and a fork of the king and rook. So this was a, a mistake uh, by the opponent. Uh, so I now jump my knight forward, so setting that up, so if they don't do something, that will be a fork. Uh, and they push their uh, d pawn, blocking that diagonal. And here I make uh, my first uh, mistake, which is to take. Uh, and you can see that's a mistake, back to equality. And basically what happens is after the opponent captures back with their pawn, I've given pretty much the full center to the opponent with, you know, rook and queen facing down the E and D file. So that's potentially pretty good for white. However, my opponent captures back with the knight, which is again a mistake. And this is one of these complicated positional games is that both white and black can make some significant errors. And so they've given me back the advantage. I now push that pawn. I thought that was potentially good, but you, you can see Stockfish thought this was just all equal. And you know, things are pretty tricky here. So they now sort of jump their knight uh, to this position, and I thought this was potentially fine for me. For me to take. I think Stockfish actually thought this was a great move, almost you know, moving towards minus two, minus three. Uh, you know, they sort of capture uh, with the with the queen. So I saw that. 
but I also saw that I had a discovered attack on the queen. However, uh, I, I kind of flubbed this, so because I thought, oh look, you know, here I can take that pawn, defended by my queen, uh, I can sort of basically well, win a pawn, while actually missing a much better move. Can you see what the better move is? Yeah, so knight here, attacking the, uh, attacking the, uh, the bishop, and also a discovered attack on the queen. So basically, I will definitely win a piece, given that that, uh, that bishop isn't defended by any other piece at the moment. However, I took that pawn, uh, which was a uh, you know, relative blunder. Oh, it was actually just a straight up blunder. So white is, is better here. Uh, queen moves to that position. I now bring my queen out again, sort of looking, looking at that uh, F pawn there. Now, they now push their pawn to attack my queen, and I actually saw this potential trap because uh, what I was seeing was if I take, if they take back with the, uh, with the rook, then I've got a very nice skewer with my bishop. Uh, so I was very happy with that. Uh, Stockfish, yep, saw that that was a straight up mistake by white, uh, sort of minus one or so. Uh, and this goes exactly as I thought. There we go, with a very, very nice skewer. Uh, now, here I was potentially sort of doing fairly well, you know, minus five of being able to spring that skewer. Uh, but, you know, I was just too impatient. I immediately decided to take. That was a mistake. So we think of that uh, being a potential uh, pinned piece, then I really should place pressure on the pinned piece. So I take, they take back, and of course uh, now, I sort of was a bit flustered, need to move my queen. I move my queen here thinking, you know, there'll be sort of potential trade, but actually what happens is I've just hung my knight. And so, you know, uh, now plus one, uh, you know, I now play this move, which I thought was okay. So plus four, minus plus five. Now, the reason why that's a blunder is um, I am basically, you know, um, down in, um, not technically down materials, you can see materially balanced, but I've got these two rooks, neither of them are really sort of in a developed attacking position, while these uh, bishops uh, are very, very strong, the queen is strong, the knight can potentially jump ahead, and so, and they're up a piece. So, I, uh, so for, for an extra pawn, so I've got an extra pawn and extra rook, um, while they have an extra bishop and knight. And actually having more pieces is probably better, particularly in the earlier part of the game where the rooks can't really exert their advantage. Now the best move here is actually rook uh, e8. So that attacks the bishop, but more than that, it also attacks, um, uh, well, allows for an infiltration onto the opponent's back rank. And that would straight up pin that uh, that knight to the uh, to the rook, so that potentially sort of negates some of the uh, potential additional piece that the opponent has, and allows for a very aggressive development of my of my piece. But I missed that. <laughs> I pushed that forward, which was a bad move. But I think the opponent here loses their advantage because you know it's a tricky, complicated position. Rook forward. Uh, they try to develop their knight. You know, here we go. You know, attacking two pieces. Uh, so I thought that was potentially good. Uh, they may find the best move by defending their bishop with the pawn. And here I'm sort of basically offering a trade of bishops, which is what they take. Uh, so, and here they make the wrong move. And again, this is tricky, tricky positions because, you know, I can see what they're trying to do, of course. They're trying to develop their knight, bring the knight into it, the attack. However, this was apparently a, best, uh, a bad move. So I think the best move for them was um, uh, was actually yeah playing um, yeah the knight to that position maybe as a bit of defense or actually I think bring the knight forward to that square tricky 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 so I now um, to bring my uh, my rook uh, centralize my rook so take control of the file so relative mistake but you can see I'm winning back some of the uh, some of that lost advantage. Uh, they bring their uh, their bishop back, which was interesting because these pieces now are a little bit stuck, a little bit stuck here, uh, which is very interesting. So I now play um, uh, f3. Uh, uh, so basically, you know, blocking off that potential sort of square. Queen, 
know, with an attack, that's fine. I thought that was potentially a good move, defending my rook. This was a blunder, as you can see. And the reason for that is because it allows for the infiltration of the queen, which comes with check. Now, I didn't see that, but neither did my opponent. They were just moving the queen, allowing, you know, the knight to come forward. But the knight is now sort of on the edge of the board, which isn't too good for them. Uh, and you can see we're now back to equality. Queen to e4. So attacking the pawn. Um, and here they make their uh, terminal blunder. And thematically, it's the same blunder they, uh, the first mistake remember they made, they pushed their pawn in front of their king. Now they push their other pawn in front of the king. You know, pushing pawns in front of your king, not a very good idea uh, because it allows a king to be attacked. Anytime you move a pawn, you create a deficit behind the pawn. And here that deficit is that diagonal, which of course comes with a very nice fork. Um, so now I capture that rook and now I'm completely winning. So minus six. A uh, few more moves. So this was a sort of tricky move uh, by the opponent. So potentially sort of at uh, attacking, uh, attacking there. Right. Uh, and here I play uh, rook to d1 and of course looking at creating a checkmate threat. Opponent captures the pawn, which of course comes with check. Need to, uh, now here, uh, you know, number of potential uh, possibilities. So, you know, I thought capturing back the knight was probably a bad move. You know, remember the idea, moving pawns in front of your king. I wanted these pawns to stay here uh, because, you know, I didn't want to have a queen infiltration. So slide the king out of the way in a diagonal, so I can't be checked now by the uh, by the knight again. This is still threatening checkmate. Bishop, yep, and here I capture that bishop. Um, you know, knight jumps forward. Uh, here, you know, with check. Uh, and here, you know, uh, the I thought the opponent probably only had one move here, which was to block with the knight, but they didn't. They moved their king, and you know these deficits from the uh, from the pawns being moved forward now, you know, uh, now can be seen because here we go, check, uh, king forced to move to this square and mate. Good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is that pushing pawns in front of your castled king is risky and probably should be avoided unless there is a very good reason to do so. Thank you for watching and have a good day.